Wait, can I give my hand? <laughs> Wait, no! <laughs> Your stack is so much bigger than mine. I feel like this lighting is just not good for me. You're gonna have to edit this shit out. <laughs> I will. Stop! I'm posing! This pillow to be, and I really like this little cat pillow. Imagine we film this whole thing in the merch gallery. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, because then you can still see all your little, like, fall things. Okay. I feel like. I like my pillow. Target! This is not sponsored. I'm going to put hello. It's got a cat. Yay! Okay, so. Thank you. Okay, hello everyone. Today we're doing October TBRs because it's fall and me and Kelsey are really excited about it. And this is Kelsey's room. This is not my room. She Hi. wants you to know. I spent a lot of money decorating this, money I don't have. Do you want to cheers? Oh, Sorry. yes! What do you want me to say while you're like, doing stuff? Like, I don't know how Everything. to- Everything. Well, then I'll just talk over you the whole time. Yeah, you can do that. It'll be just like real life. Don't spill any fucking Earl Grey on my fingers. Cheers. Yeah, today's drink we did Earl Grey and then brown sugar creamer and also pumpkin creamer. Shout out Trader Joe's. We each have six books that we're gonna show you guys. And do you want me to start or do you want to start, Kelsey? Um, you start. I want to know what you have. Okay, so obviously this is the TBR for October, so we both kind of picked the, you know, like Halloween -y, spooky Space reads. Books. So the first one that I have is The Once in Future Witches Ooh. by Alex E. Harrow. I picked this up, I think, literally over a year ago. Like, it's been sitting on my shelf for over a year. <laughs> It's because I was saving it to read specifically in October. Like, I was waiting to read it now. This is a book about three sisters. Salem witch trials happened a long time ago, and now it's not really a thing. Like, being a witch isn't a thing. But then they have to, like, somehow get into all the witchy stuff. I don't really know. But witches who are, like, joining the suffrage mm -hmm. And they have to learn the old magic. I love a witchy book, and I also love a standalone. But I'm also not afraid of historical fiction slash, like, mystic realism. And I think some people are, so... Book. I think it's interesting. Yeah. Do you want to read it now, Kelsey? Kinda. Okay, hit us with your first one. Okay, so <laughs> I'm going really spooky. I'm going Stephen King, Pet Cemetery. Ooh. This will be my second Stephen King. I read The Shining when I was in middle school. Terrible idea because I was scared of my bathtub for a really long time. <laughs> if you've seen Slash read The Shining, you know. I'm really excited. I haven't read a really good horror book in a long time. Yeah, I haven't read any Stephen King in Really? Yeah. You should read The Shining. That is a good one. Okay. Basically, I just looked up scariest Stephen King books and this one came up, but then one of my friends told me it's not scary. Hmm. So, I don't really know. You'll be the we'll judge of that. Out. But basically, it's about this, like, family who moves to Maine, which I feel like he writes a lot about Maine. There's always something happening in Maine. Does he live there? Maine. 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 <laughs> <laughs> it's like a creepy house, because of course it is. And there's a, there's a pet cemetery. Out back, hence the name Pet Cemetery. I have no idea what happens. I'm going into this one completely blind, but I am very excited for Stephen King. I do have one more Stephen King on my list for this month, so I'm very excited. I hope it is good. Ooh, love. My second book is called The Final Girl Support Group. Ooh, I heard that one's good. By Grady Hendrix. And I, one of the first books I read this year was The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires, and it was so good. I love that book so much, which is why I picked this one up, and it's basically about how in horror movies the final girls are like the last ones left standing and then this is what the book says it says they made it through the worst night of their lives but what happens after and then it's basically like somebody is targeting all the final girls from all these horror movies that i feel like that's all i need to say about this like this is yes. this is 300 pages there's no way there's no way no i've been wanting to read that one i might have to borrow it when you're done because that looks, it sounds really good it's just yeah the southern book club's canceling vampires was hilarious like it was so really good. it was so okay. good Maybe I'll have to so it i'm really excited about this one i was saving this one for october too yeah I feel like I have so many books and like I'm just gonna find more during this video to read. I know. And I'm just not gonna <laughs> maybe, have... Maybe we were shooting ourselves in the foot with this one. Yeah, six, six books is a lot. I've read two and a half in yeah. September. Well, September was a slump month for me. Was, I only yes. got through two books as well. Yeah. I read like ten in August. No. I was Because I was at the beach. Yeah. And I read two and a half. Well, now like, Kelsey's in grad school, you guys. So she has lots of things to do. But fall break is in two weeks <gasps> and I will be getting a lot of reading done. I will not be doing anything but reading. So, because I'm really behind on my Goodreads challenge. What is your challenge? 50 books. I'm only at 29. <gasps> I'm also at 50 books. I think I'm at like, I think I'm at like 35. You're, I'm not that much further ahead than you are. Yeah. No, I'm three books behind schedule. It's really bad. I was like ahead for so long and then now all of a sudden it's like you're three books behind. 
but hopefully October will change that because I'm really excited about all my books. Yeah. Here is my next one, Frankenstein, a classic, obviously. Mm -hmm. I have never read it. I was not a classics girly until recently. I like last year like made like a resolution maybe that I, I don't know what to call it. I was like basically I'm gonna read classics. So I'm reading a ton of Jane Austen and... Are you doing the Rory Gilmore challenge? I'm not doing it intentionally. However, if I am reading a book and it is on the Rory Gilmore challenge... She's checking it off. I'll check it off. Yeah, I'm not like going through it though. Because mm -hmm. there's books I want to read. Yeah. But yeah, a lot of Jane Austen. I don't think... I literally am blanking on every other classic <laughs> author right now. But just know that my like book list of well, books... Well, Jane Austen's is the only one. The she's the only one that matters. I mean, honestly, all of her books are served. She's never lost. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but this We're is Frankenstein. If you haven't heard of it, which, all right. It's about a guy who builds a monster and then the monster goes to terrorize people because he realizes he's a monster. I think I'm probably gonna cry because I don't know why, it just makes me so sad that he's so misunderstood. The monster. Yeah, for yeah. instance, the monster. I actually got this book at a used bookstore and it's, an like there's annotations in it, I think, which is really cute because I wanna see what this person who read it last thought of it. They have terrible handwriting. Mm -hmm. Sorry to the person who got this book from them, but you have absolutely atrocious handwriting. Okay, the next book on my October TBR is A Certain Hunger by Chelsea G. Summers. Kelsey read this. That book eats. So, mm -hmm. oh, it's it's really, no, it's really good. It's funny. It says on the back that she eats people. It's about a girl who eats people. Yes, girl boss. Yeah, so I guess she's a food writer. I'm a little nervous about this one because Kelsey said it was kind of... What, didn't you say it was intense? I can't remember. So, uh, yeah, it is... A lot. I think the prose is very gory. Yeah. I think that if you're not someone who likes gory stuff, which I do, I like very grotesque writing, it's not gonna be for you. I just remember it's very vivid. Yeah, I remember Logan reading it and being like, this is kind of a lot. It is a lot. So. I would I would describe that book as a lot. That is how I would describe it. But it is fantastic if you get through it. I'm definitely gonna get through it because I want to, since they both read it. I definitely want to read it. Just let's just see what I think. You may have to sit with yourself for a while. <laughs> if you are if you are not someone who likes gory stuff, you have to sit with yourself. Yeah. But it, I, it is my only five-star read so far this year. Interesting. It is the, it's my only five-star read in a very long time. Every, I pretty much give everything four stars, and this hmm. blew me away. I loved it. Shout out Chelsea G. Summers. I will say, I think that book is kind of controversial, though. Well, you love controversy. I do love controversy. So go on. All right. Hit us mm. with your next one. The next one is another classic. Because of course it is. I love this cover. Shout out Penguin Classics. This is a great <laughs> cover. Look at him. Look, it's Dracula. I don't think I said that. Dracula. He's so scary. It is Dracula. It's about a vampire. Duh. I think like the very first vampire ever, maybe. <laughs> Was Dracula the first vampire? Yeah. Well, I mean, I think that. Who's the first vampire? I'm not going to delve into vampire history because I don't know anything beyond Twilight. But. I do, I am very excited for this one because it's like the vampire story. Yeah. It says that it's going to talk about the dark corners of Victorian sexuality, but if you know anything about those people, they were freaks. So I'm excited because what can be freakier than a vampire Honestly. in Victorian England? How Maybe. long is it? This book? This is that print is small. 401 pages and then there's like obviously introductions and like letters Nonsense. at the back yeah. that I never read them because the introduction always spoils the book. And it goes perfectly on my shelf. My yeah, all of our books are fitting the like vibe. It's like black, white, and red, obviously. And it's October. Okay, oh, my next book. This book is called The Appeal by Janice Hallett. It says one murder, 15 suspects. Can you uncover the truth? Ooh. I love a little mystery. I had to throw one in there for October. And it's basically about a local theater group and they're in the middle of rehearsals and then a dead body is found like during all of this. And oh, no. it's kind of like the people that are running the theater, their granddaughter has like a rare form of cancer and they're, she's trying to get this experimental treatment. So the whole theater troupe is like rallying around to like support it. But then people are like, no, we don't trust it. So I guess the motive would have something to do with maybe somebody who's trying to like push this experimental treatment or not or there's something there's like a medical angle involved there's a lot of layers to this book yeah and it goes beyond normal murder mystery. yeah i just looked through there's like text messages there's like interesting mm. formatting and so i'm just kind of like intrigued yeah so just like a little mm. fun mystery unfortunately i'm not really a mystery novel girl mm. like people keep recommending the guest list to me and i'm like <sighs> You would not like it. No, I know I wouldn't. I read it. You would not like it. No, because I always feel really stupid reading mysteries, and I don't like reading stupid books. <laughs> I'm bad at solving mysteries. I don't care. Fuck clues. I like Sherlock Holmes. I did, I did read Sherlock Holmes at the beginning of this year. I feel like you could fuck with like Agatha Christie or like. I actually started Agatha Christie book and I never finished it. 
It's okay, they're kind of like, it is one of two books I have dnf this year. I would feel like Agatha Christie, it's not like a riveting read, but the way that she does her mysteries are very specific, whereas yeah. I feel like newer mysteries, they're like, let me just tie something a little bow, and like, oh my god, gotcha, like they're more for a gotcha moment, mm -hmm. whereas Agatha Christie is like very specific in like a twist, or like very specific in how it all is. She's one of the best mystery writers of all time for a reason. Yeah, so. I guess it makes sense. Mm -hmm. Okay, my next book, I don't have a physical copy of it because I'm reading it on my friend's Kindle. She's lending it out. But it is my second Stephen King. I'm going to be reading okay, Carrie, yeah. which Ooh. I have never seen the movie. So I'm also kind of going there. Yeah. I've, the only Stephen King movie I have seen, actually, no, I was going to say the only one I've ever seen is The Shining, but I've seen it and I love it. One of my favorite movies. I have heard the book is a little like screwed up, so I might not read it. It's also like a thousand pages. I don't have time for that. That's a lot. That's too many. Anyway, so Carrie's about a girl in high school and I think she has powers and she gets bullied. Everyone's seen the, he's like pig's blood. She gets blood dumped on her, like at her prom. I think it was like the picture of her in the limo with the blood all over her. I I've mean, seen the picture, I but think, I also don't know anything about it. I think she it. gets the blood dumped on her and she just goes ballistic and she just kills a bunch of people. If a bunch of people have dumped animal blood on me. Personally. I would probably be pretty pissed as yeah. well. How would you I don't, feel? I don't know that I would murder people. I, I mean, would be pretty upset though. That does seem extreme. I don't know, but I'm excited. You know, Stephen King. King of Horror. Is it my turn? Oh, yes, it's this one? I'm really excited about this one. This is called The Book Eaters by Sunny Dean. I don't know how you're going to feel about this. First of all, you cannot... This like first part is one of those things where you read it and you're like, eh, okay. But mm. then the actual concept sounds cool. So this is the first part. It says, truth is found between the stories we're fed and the stories we have. Yeah, that's for. stupid. But let me read the actual thing. So it says, out on the Yorkshire Moors lives a secret line of people for whom books are food and who retain all of a book's content after eating it. To mm. them, spy novels are a peppery snack. Romance novels are sweet and delicious. Eating a map can help them remember destinations and children when they misbehave are forced to eat dry, musty pages from dictionaries. Devon is a part of the family, an old and reclusive clan of book eaters. Her brothers grew up feasting on stories of valor and adventure, and Devon, like all other book eater women, is raised on a carefully curated diet of fairy tales and cautionary stories. But real life doesn't always come with happy endings, as Devon learns when her son is born with a rare and darker kind of hunger, not for books, but for human minds. Oh, he's gonna eat people? Yeah. So it just sounds like a certain hunger, but worse, got it. <laughs> It's also not cool when men eat people, but women can eat people. I'm glad that we've made that distinction. Feminism. I don't know, it just sounds interesting. Now that you bring it up, like I didn't like think about these two together. The parallels. Yeah, also they look very similar. Like, oh, with just, the red and the black, the color scheme is similar. And like the I way think, that the red is like coming out on the like on the side. Blood. It'll be interesting to see mm -hmm. just what I think of each of them and if they are actually gonna be kind of parallel or oh, like you're gonna like a certain hundred more completely fantastic different. story. Kelsey. My next two are story collections. I apologize, they are not normal books. Going in the same theme as classics, but I do, I love a good short story. I really do, I love a good short story. I think this year I've really come to appreciate them. I've read several short story collections. I did too. And I really enjoyed them. I would like to read more in the future because two authors that I really like have short story collections that I have yet to get around to. Who? Otessa Moshfeg and Sayaka Murata. Both have short story collections that I have not read. Mm -hmm. And they're the only book I have left to read for each of them before I read all of I their I love books. that you're reading all of the books of like one author. Yes, I love doing that. I have, I'm have. i almost done with Jane Austen. I feel like that's another one. We were talking about lip liner earlier and how using lip liner is mm -hmm. like a sign that we're maturing. I feel like reading all of the books one author writes yeah. is also one of those things. Yes, it is. Because usually I could say that for like one author, but now that we're getting older, I feel like I'm like, oh, I like her writing. I want to read all of those. Yeah. Yeah. So I agree. All of my favorite authors are women too because I'm a hashtag girl boss. Yeah, I think they're like there's it's very rare that I read a book by a man. Yeah. Shout um, out actually, Hendrix. This is really interesting because actually most of my books are men. Interesting. I say the two Stephen Kings and uh Bram Stoke Brom. Bram Brom. Bram Stoker. My next book, Japanese Tales of Mystery and Imagination. Mm -hmm. I love Japanese literature. I am a big fan of Japanese authors and I'm very excited to read this. I'm gonna out myself here as an anime fan. Is it okay if I put that on the internet? Yeah. This part? That's, no, yeah, you can put this on the okay. internet. I, I'm, I'm pretty open about it at this point. <laughs> oh no, Karen's gonna make fun of me. I hate this. you, Karen. You can put that on the internet. Okay, I will. Okay, this book is called Japanese Tales of Mystery and Imagination by Edogawa Rampo which is a pen name for an author, and I cannot remember his real name. My apologies to that man. But it is the Japanese pronunciation of Edgar Allan Poe. 
which I think is very cool. Interesting. Um, yes, the inspiration for me reading this book came from an anime called Bungo Stray Dogs. Basically all the main characters are like classic authors. And so a lot of my books that I've been reading recently come from this show. A lot of people say that he's a very, very talented mystery writer. So I'm very excited. Maybe he'll to see. turn you into a mystery girl. Like. He might, he might. So I've read one Japanese horror novel this year. I read The Ring and it was okay. But I really like a lot of like Japanese like folklore and I really love a lot of the writing styles of Japanese authors. It's really I've interesting. never read anything. Oh, Sayaka Murata. She read it, I'm telling you. Um, Maybe she's, I will. She's fantastic. She has some good Halloween books. Earthlings mm. is weird. If you think that a certain hunger is grotesque, Earthlings is. I'm really excited <laughs> to read these books. That book made me sick to my stomach. Anyway. <laughs> oh, his name is literally on the back of this book. Oh. Harai Taro. I, I'm so sorry, I don't speak Japanese. I'm excited because he takes the Western format of a mystery because he's inspired by Edgar Allan Poe and he blends a lot of Japanese culture and sort of like folklore into it, which I'm really excited to read. I am very excited for this book. My last read is very exciting. Oh, okay, mine is too. Okay, my last read, obviously I had to put a little fantasy moment Classic. there. Classic Mira. Also, my camera is dying, so we'll <gasps> see. Mm. Let's stop and charge. That way it doesn't cut anything out. Do a little pause moment. Okay, we took a little moment to charge the camera before we do our last books. My last book on my October TBR is... <laughs> is it Babel or Babel? I want to say Babel. I want to say Babel too because it's like Maybe it's language. Babel. 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 I think it's Babel though. It's something to do with like languages. Or yeah, so I feel like Babel. Like right, so that's what you know? I was thinking. That's why I'm like, thinking. Maybe that's where we get, like it's not, that's not the etymology. Yeah. Though. But it could be. Academia <laughs> vibes, first of all, first of all. How many times do you say first of all? First of all. My main motivation for reading this is because I read Arf Kwong's Poppy War trilogy mm -hmm. and that is a five star series for me. What, do you something to No, I just, I haven't read it, but. Well, that's a five-star series for me. And as we are talking about earlier, this is definitely an author that I will be reading all of her books, like no matter what happens, probably. This book is about this guy named Robin Swift. That's and a terrible name. What about Robin Hood? Whatever happened to Robin Hood? You know, that's a really good question. Cholera! He's basically a student that's training under a professor to attend Oxford University's prestigious Don't do it in British. British translation. Don't do it in British. It's a center of translation. Basically, he is realizing that it's like the pursuit of knowledge will somehow betray his country. I've heard that it's like kind of a fantasy vibe. But I really don't know a lot about this book, honestly. I just know that I want to read it. I think there's like some war happening. Yeah, which would track for just our Fong. For some reason, I just thought it was like a fantasy situation, but like maybe it's definitely not. I don't know. But it has to do with war between Britain and China and the pursuit of knowledge and power. Britain. Way more out of people. But yeah, so that is my final book. Mine is much less exciting, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Mine is the complete stories and poems of Edgar Allan Poe. Boom! All How's that? Them? All of them. Every All single one. Them. How's that okay. for spooky in October? You know, I think you might win. I have read, of course, The Telltale Heart. Who among us has not? And Classic that's sixth, seventh grade English assignment. So true. <laughs> that's about all I know about Edgar Allan Poe. You're gonna read all of them. Well, I'm gonna read every single one, all of his poems, all of his short stories. I'm very excited. Question, are you gonna read this first or the Japanese Tales of Mystery Imagination first? I think it's gonna depend on how I feel. This book is a ginormous 800 pages. Damn. <laughs> there is no way in hell this is getting finished. Yeah, this in is October, only like but unfortunately, this is the October book. I feel like you can't yeah. read Edgar Allan Poe not in October. Yeah, it is a really. You know, I mean, you could read as much of it as you can, save until next October. That, but that feels like that's kind of a lot. lot. That's yeah. a lot. I was thinking about that, but that's a lot. He's a he's an interesting critter, Mr. Edgar Allan Poe. <laughs> he's an interesting critter. Yeah, he had a lot going on. Um, he was a silly goose for sure. But I'm excited to you know really crack him open. I think the one I'm most excited about, just really get in his noggin and see what's going on up there. The one I'm most excited about, I think the story in here that I was excited about, the cast of Amontillado, because that was on an SAT a few years ago and now people never shut up about it. And I want to understand the jokes. I want to know what's oh, happening. I've never even I think that some man got, gets like locked in a cellar. I don't know. Oh like God, I got, I'm going to sound so stupid in this video. 
Your watch <laughs> your viewers your viewers are gonna be like, what the hell is she talking about? Is she, My viewers like can she read books? Is she literate? She's reading the classics. She I am reading the classics. Do I understand what's happening in them? No, but I'm reading them. Unfortunately, my TBR is not quite as fun as yours. I think yours is a lot more fun. Mine, yeah, but mine is definitely giving high school. <laughs> <laughs> but you're on that kind of weight right now, the like. I am. I am. Um, and you know what? It's punishment. The reading of classics yeah. is punishment until the new Emily Henry comes out. Fair. Another thing is that also I feel like I've been compiling this these books for a while just because I'm like, oh, I'm gonna read that in October. Oh, I'm gonna read that in October. So I feel like I have a lot of good. <gasps> What? I almost knocked my candle off. <laughs> I'm going back, I set fire to my house. We're gonna do a little overview for you. Run through our books really fast at the end, just so you guys have them all on your little brains. My October TV art to recap is the Once and Future Witches, the Final Girl Support Group, A Certain Hunger. <laughs> I'm being an active listener. <laughs> the Appeal, The Book Eaters, and. Babel, Babel, Babel. It's mine. Take it away. Not quite as much fun as Mira's. No, don't say that. It is. You fun. know what? It's it's fun for me to yeah. read Dracula and Frankenstein. Maybe not anyone else, but Stephen King. That was backwards. Stephen King Pet Cemetery. <laughs> also, Stephen King Carrie. Put a book there for you. Ah, Mary Shelley Frankenstein. Hate this cover. Not a fan of this cover. Just so that I'll scream. Man. Sorry to this man, but he's a creep. Dracula. Love that cover. Fantastic cover. Japanese Tales of Mystery and Imagination. Edogawa Rampa. The Complete Tales and Stories of Edgar Allan Poe. Oh, um, very boring cover. It's just mm -hmm. this color. Just, which is black. The color is black. It's just a black <laughs> book. The book is just black. I can't wait to edit this. I don't know why I said it's this color. Well, that is all. Wait. It's our little October <gasps> TBR. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was getting there. Okay. Oh, are you showing this fine? Oh, now? oh no, I thought. Well, no, wait. well. <laughs> Happy October to no! you are. Mira, Mira so little, everybody. Happy reading. Happy reading. Happy reading. Happy reading. Happy, reading. Happy October. <laughs> oh. I think that you got absolutely no content. <laughs>